Welcome to the third part of lecture four of experimental vibration analysis. In this video, we will uh, discuss some principles that can be used for data quality assessment. And the content of this video is found in chapter four of the book, Noise and Vibration Analysis. So first of all, <clears throat> data quality assessment should always be used after data have been recorded, as there is a lot that can go wrong in a vibration measurement. Thus, we look for faults in data that can come from, for example, the following, which are only a few common problems we get into in vibration measurement applications. We can have broken cables. We can have broken sensors. The accelerometers that we typically use for vibration measurements, for example, are very sensitive devices. So it's not unusual that a sensor is broken. And like bad cables, this can lead to a series of different faults. Then we have loose connectors, cable connectors. Uh, this is a common cause of intermittent faults, such as spikes in the data. We also have loose sensors. Another thing that can happen, uh, the sensor sometimes loosens from either, either or regardless of whether it's uh, glued or, or mounted by uh, wax or even uh, screwed, it can sometimes dismount and loosen from the structure. This can uh, lead to serious errors. And then of course in long measurements uh, things uh, like someone walking past an accelerometer with hard heels or a bird even picking on the accelerometer or someone talking next to a microphone if it's an acoustic measurement can be other causes of errors so to speak that we need to watch out for. So there are many things that you should look for in your data before you start analyzing the data. A problem with data quality assessment is that it's difficult to define what is normal and what is a fault because the signals from various vibration applications are very different in nature. What we have to do then is that we have to adapt the data quality assessment method after the application. This means that there is no one way to f perform data quality assessment. But typically, of course, if you work with a particular application of vibrations, as you are most, of course, most likely to do, then you learn of the errors that typically occur in your application. An important aspect is that data quality assessment has to be done on time data. After computing a spectrum, for example, uh, it's in most cases no longer possible to detect if there was an error in the signal. So the principle of data quality assessment is rather simple. First, you calculate a number of statistical values for each channel, each sensor that you have measured. And today this is often many. And then by experience, you learn what is normal for all these statistical values. And then you look for out of normal values. Not all such alarms mean necessarily that there is something wrong. So it's a good habit to investigate suspic suspicious looking channels and simply try to understand what gives rise to the unusual statistical value. Now I know that this sounds loose, but this is as good as I can do it because there are so many different kinds of signals in different applications. Now, some us usual useful measures that you can use are for example the mean, if the mean is not around zero, this is usually an indication of some something wrong uh, when it's a vibration application. Then you have the mean and max. Uh, these are often good values to look at because uh, most vibration signals should be rather symmetric. So the mean and max should have about the same value uh, except the minus sign. The RMS level is more difficult to interpret since the RMS levels can be very different in different points on a structure. But nevertheless, it can be good to keep track of this since it's somehow showing the level of the signal. Skewness is a very good measure to keep track of since it's particularly sensitive to some of the errors that make the signal non-symmetric around zero. For example, spikes going only one way, positive or negative, in the data. And kurtosis, finally, 
may be the most sensitive measure for many kinds of errors, such as electrical spikes in the data, for example. Moreover, it's important to not only compute the statistical values in the last slide using all the recorded data. This may not detect a temporary error that occurs only in some part of the data. So the solution is to compute all the values for frames of the data as well. But then, errors that are occurring only intermittently, or perhaps only once, can be detected. But the problem, of course, is that if you make a reasonably large measurement, we say 64 channels, and you record an hour of data, just as an, as an example, uh, then you divide that into second long fra frames, well, you end up with an enormous amount of frames to look at. So a good solution can then be that you uh, only look at the min and max of those values for each of the channels, of course. Finally, you should visualize the values. The eye, the human eye, is not very good at finding an odd value in a table. So two things that can be very good is normalizations, first of all. If you uh, normalize all the values of a particular kind, say all the RMS values, to the RMS value of one channel, then most of the values should be around one if they are similar values. And then you can see if there are values that stick out and deviate from this value. Another thing which is very useful is to use bar graphs because the eye is very sensitive to obtain or to look find a bar in a bar chart which sticks out of the other values. So these are some tips on how you can do data quality assessment. And there are a couple commands in the Abravibe toolbox uh, that you can use for this. StatCheck, for example, creates standard statistical values in a matrix uh, for time signals that you have in a matrix. And uh, StatCheck F creates standard statistics for time signals that are stored on hard disk in the Abravibe file formats. This concludes the current lecture. Now you can go to the book and read the uh, relevant chapter and uh, work through the examples at the end of the uh, chapter. Then you should also go to the chapter examples in the Abravibe toolbox and read through these and run them and make sure that you understand all the steps involved. If you haven't yet downloaded the toolbox, you sh should do so at www.abravibe.com. Welcome back to the next lecture when you have worked through this.